All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 12th day of October in the year of our Lord, 2023. I'm going to try to be to the point and quick about what is happening in the Middle East right now. Um, American mainstream uh, media and social media are not and uh, will not be reliable sources in regard to this or really anything else as we've experienced in the past. They are controlled by one side, largely, and it's not the Palestinian side. <laughs> uh, this has been the history of America. Uh, and the, the uh, uh, well, we have people that have dual citizenship. Uh, millions of people that are in the United States that have, are citizens of the United States and are citizens of Israel. <sighs> okay. Uh, and many, many, many Christians have been brainwashed uh, by a system uh, called dispensationalism and converted into Christian Zionists uh, uh, instead of biblical Christians. They do not know what the scripture teaches. They listen to man's opinion rather than to the word of God all too often. All too often. Uh, and they don't understand the scriptures anyway when they read them. It's a, it's a serious issue. Uh, what's happening right now and I've been to Israel. I've seen what Israel does firsthand. Um, when I went over there, I many of my illusions were... Uh, I, was, I was disillusioned by what I saw in Israel. How they treat other people. How they treat uh, the Palestinians. Uh, collective punishment. And this was, what, 40 years ago now. Jeepers, I'm getting old. Uh, about 40 years ago, I saw this stuff. Uh, and I've seen... Uh, over the years, uh, Israel repeatedly and deliberately commit war crimes, uh, war crimes under international law. Uh, the uh, collective punishment is a war crime. Uh, I saw that when I was there. There wasn't even a conflict going on. Uh, I, I saw them on, use uh, white phosphorus on Gaza. In fact, I saw a video, a couple of videos uh, over the last couple of days where I wasn't sure what they were using but it looked like white phosphorus. If you see flaming objects coming down with lots of white smoke, that's probably white phosphorus. Use of white phosphorus on civilian areas is a war crime. It's a war crime. That is really nasty stuff. And it's basically, you cannot put it out. You cannot put it out by throwing water on it or anything. It'll, it'll burn its way into your flesh. And it is only wicked, wicked people would use such a thing on civilians, people that treat them less, less than human. And Israel is doing the same thing that they complain about other nations doing to them in the past. Genocide. Uh, and it appears to me that since 1948, especially since 1967, the repeated goal of the Israelis has been to push out to dispossess the Palestinians. Uh, regardless of what they say publicly, it's simply look at a current map of the Jewish settlements in what's called the West Bank, which they don't call the West Bank anymore, uh, <clears throat> and see what they've done. They've made it impossible for a two-state solution. Impossible. And they're not willing to live with non-Jewish neighbors anyway, really. Uh, Israel was first established by the, the secular Zionists, going back to uh, Theodore Herzl in late 19, 1890s and, and then into the 20th century as a, uh, now the people that established the original state or proposed a land for the Jewish people, this, this final solution for the Jewish persecution problem. Uh, well, they were, they were, well, we'd call them atheists. They, they did not, they were not religious Jews and they certainly weren't Christians. 
they were non-believing, non-practicing Jews. Uh, and the state was established on that basis by those people. But now the people that are in control are really a small minority fraction. And Netanyahu's got a very weak government. Likud did not win a majority, so they had to form a coalition. And uh, Netanyahu's got all kinds of baggage. It would be like Donald Trump being elected. He would have so much baggage uh, with legal issues, and Netanyahu's got lots of legal issues. Uh, so it's a weak government that is that has the radical right, the the settlers, the, the radical settlers, and the religious Zionists that want to establish an uh, an old uh, an, is a Jewish state based on the Old Testament model, a uh, religious Jewish state. It's already a Jewish state, but a religious Jewish state with a halakha law or um, not not rabbinic, but rather going back to the Old Testament uh, law of Moses, uh, including rebuilding the temple uh, and sacrifices. So that small minority, because it's necessary for Netanyahu to stay in power, uh, is essentially, and because they tend to appoint cabinet ministers to to pacify the members of the coalition, they have essentially seized control of the Israeli government. And what happened on Saturday, the uh, response of Hamas was a reaction to a, an activity of the Israeli government, uh, of the radicals in the Israeli government. The, apparently the minister of police or internal security, or whatever they call it over there, uh, is one of the radicals. Uh, Netanyahu's not uh, a, really a radical, but uh, hmm. he is certainly leaning, leans in that direction. The, the Getting rid of the Palestinians. This has been a long-time goal. And again, look at the map of the settlements, and they've made it impossible for a two-state two solution. They are gradually eating away at Palestinian lands and pushing them out pushing them out, not allowing them to expand, putting settlements all over more and more and more every year. And the United States has been unwilling to actually strong arm Israel into doing anything because half the world's population of Jews lives, guess where? Not in Israel. A half does live there, basically, but the other half lives where? In the United States. And they're very influential and have uh, considerably more financial resources to uh, to grease the palms of the Congress than uh, than the uh, the Palestinians in the United States, but what I want to tell you this is not a Palestinian Israeli issue at this point. It is something bigger, and it has to do with the radical Israeli government and a provocation that happened on Thursday of last week. Uh, the the Hamas's response on Saturday was in reaction to what happened on Thursday. A group of settlers and radical, uh, let's call them religious Zionists, who want to reestablish the ancient state of Israel, invaded the Temple Mount, invaded the, uh, the compound of the al Aska Mosque on the Temple Mount. Uh, under Israeli government escort and protection. In the past, the Israeli police have prevented these elements from demonstrating and doing other activities on the, on the, on the mount, on the, on the uh, temple, it was called the Temple Mount by other people. <laughs> uh, the, I can't remember, the Haram al-Sharif or something like that in the, the Arab, uh, the Muslim world which is the third holiest site in Islam. So you have uh, Mecca and Medina, and then you have Jerusalem, the, the Temple Mount. Uh, the, the mosque is not just the mosque. El Asqa is, the, is a mosque proper that sits on the southern end of the area of the Temple Mount that was expanded by Herod the Great. Uh, and this is 
and there's the entr main entrance was in the south wall. There's like three openings there, so people would go up through a tunnel onto the top upper pavement, and that's where Jesus would have entered the uh, the temple area too. What's called the Portico of Solomon, uh, a colonnade area that was up there, uh, and uh, built by Herod, who was a great builder, and but. Uh, that is where the 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 mosque is located, and perhaps later I will pull up some slides, at least from the mid '80s, and you can see a, an overview of the area. Um, and I was on the Temple Mount and got scolded by a police officer up there. I think it was the Muslim authorities. So the, the Temple Mount is not under Israeli supervision; it's under the uh, the uh, Muslim uh, religious authorities, and it was called uh, the Waqf or something like that. Waf I can't pronounce the word. I can't remember exactly what it says. But uh, the uh, so it's the, under Muslim control, uh, and it's been that since the sixty-seven war. The Israelis did not try to take possession of the top because it would have of the mount because it would have resulted in a war that was so great that mm, Israel would have definitely lost. It would have brought in the entire Muslim world on them. Uh, because this is a matter of holy sites. See, this thing, what's going on now, is not simply uh, the Jewish state uh, and the Palestinian Arabs or Muslims. Christ well, the Christians don't react the same way as Muslims do uh, because of Christianity. But uh, most of the Christian Arabs, I believe, have left because it was becoming very difficult to live there between the Israelis and the Muslims. Uh, but the uh, this issue is far beyond a simple uh, dispossession of the Palestinians at this point. So the Israelis invaded the Temple Mount on Thursday, uh, actually as claiming a symbolic... Uh, seizure of it, a conquest of it, going there saying, essentially saying to the, to the world, this is our land, this is our holy mountain, and everybody else has got to leave. And we're going to rebuild our temple, and we're going to tear down this pagan complex here, both the, uh, the mosque and the, uh, uh, the, the Dome of the Rock, uh, the, um, what do they call that? I can't remember off the top of my head. But the Dome of the Rock is north of the mosque, and it is probably where the temple stood, or definitely in the area of the temple, because it is, um, you can tell by the what's re uh, remaining of the gates. Usually when a city wall was rebuilt, and was rebuilt by the Muslims, they would build it on older foundations, avoiding unnecessary work. So you tend to recycle previous structures. The Jewish site was uh, the Wailing Wall, or the Western Wall, which was a retaining wall built by Herod. It's not on, it's below the Temple Mount. And uh, uh, the Jews wanted to get that back, and they did in 67. But the, uh, the, top, the top of the mountain itself, or the top of the hill, is uh, has been under the control of the Muslim religious authorities. And there's a reason that Moshe Dayan, when he led the victory uh, in Jerusalem in 67, did not attempt to seize that, is because he knew that the kind of reaction that would provoke would be very bad. So here what's happening is Hamas, the, the, they called their operation al Aska, which is the name of the mosque, Flood. So it's, they claim it's a response to what happened on Thursday. And I can understand that. I mean, it, 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 of all people, Christians should be able to empathize and understand religious passions and things like that, even for those that aren't Christians. After all, we have the mind of Christ. At least you're supposed to have that. So uh, we, we can understand these things, whereas people that are remain in their sins, fallen, and do not have the Spirit of God are, are going to not be able to, to, to understand things as well. Uh, but what Israel is doing now is 
essentially, and the more I, I was afraid they'd do this, and it seems to be they're direct, they're continuing on this path, is the Israeli version of a final solution of the uh, Gaza problem uh, by wiping it out, by wiping it out. And as they go on, they do not back off that at all. There's, uh, they are flattening, using their air power and artillery to utterly flatten a city that has perhaps as many as 3.3 million people in it, in the Gaza Strip. It's uh, The city of Gaza itself is the largest place, but I think the population you'll see on the Internet is actually low. For uh, I've heard 3.3 now million people in that area. And it's, the large, it's been called the world's largest open-air prison, and that's pretty much what it is. What Israel has done now is they told them they were going to ex extract a, a terrible price for uh, the uh, incredibly successful uh, operation of Hamas, and the violence and everything else they committed is, is atrocious, but compared to what the Israelis do, the, the Israelis are, have a... Uh, Hamas is not an existential threat to Israel. It's not doesn't have that kind of power. Israel, though... It's putting itself in a position where it will bring about its own destruction, perhaps. Uh, of course, internal forces want to destroy the secular state and set, set up a religious Jewish state uh, modeled after Solomon or something. With the temple. Oh, my. That's not good. But doing that would turn this whole conflict into Israel versus the Islamic world, which is, what, 1.2 plus billion people? At least. At least. And Christians, we don't have anything comparable in Christianity. You know, if the Vatican was destroyed, if, if Rome was incinerated, it wouldn't matter to Christianity, really, because we don't have real holy sites. Real Christians don't. Our holy site is Christ itself. We don't, we don't worship in this place or that place. We don't need a temple. We are the temple. We are the temple of God. And we worship, Jesus said, the Father seeks those who will worship him in spirit and truth. Not God does not dwell in houses made by human hands. So... Uh, God is spirit. You must worship him in spirit and in truth. Both things are distinctly las lacking in this world. So it, it, it's, we, we don't have anything comparable to this, so we have to understand it from their point of view. And Hamas themselves declared it was in response to the Israeli invasion of the Temple Mount, a symbolic uh, claim being laid to that site, and a statement of, we will possess this, accompanied not just by a group of people that got up there, but by the Israeli security forces, their internal, their police forces, escorting these radicals and protecting them as they made their claims. Now, the Muslims, of course, saw this and were enraged. Uh, they've, they've, had their the, the the mosque and the Dome of the Rock has been there since I think around 800 A.D. So it, it's one of the oldest structures around, and it's the third holiest place. And it's like, you know, if, if say if you if somebody nuked uh, uh, the shrine in Mecca, what would the at reaction be? Or nuked Medina or it's like this. It's, it's, you have to understand that the, the Muslims, this is very, very important to them. And uh, the, the attempt of Israel to, to <clears throat> Israel would have to ex destroy the existing structures. These radicals are in no mood for compromise. They want to drive all the Palestinians out of the country anyway, or kill them. Sort of like the Americans, uh, the only good Indian is a dead Indian kind of policy. Uh, I wonder, uh, Hitler was inspired by the Americans' policy of 
toward the Native Americans and the use of reservations to remove them. For your information, <clears throat> Hitler took inspiration from that. Yeah. Well, apparently so did Israel. So they, uh, Gaza has been a concentration camp, a ghetto. Their version of the Warsaw Ghetto, populated by Palestinians, only a va on a vastly larger scale than the Warsaw Ghetto, ghetto in uh, World War II. Uh, and they're implementing the same kind of starvation policy that some others have used in the past against the Jewish people. They have cut off, they have sealed Gaza. The only other entrance and exit to Gaza is, uh, is to Egypt. And Israel has three times uh, attacked the, uh, that, position, that exit uh, to prevent supplies coming in. And the Egyptians have sent forces up there because they do not want the Palestinians in Egypt either. So they're going to block them in while Israel destroys them. This will be the end of the Egyptian government too, by the way. They will have hell to pay. Uh, the, their own people will. See, this is, this is the issue. The Muslim countries, if they do not respond... Say, say, say Israel destroys El Aska in order to put their, their own temple on that site. If their countries, their Muslim leaders do not respond, the people themselves will depose those leaders because they will have shown themselves to be enemies of Allah. So they'll rise up against their own rulers if they don't respond, which will be what happens in Egypt, too, if this goes even to what Israel seems to be doing, the extermination of Gaza. And that sounds uh, like a radical solution, but that's what they are commencing to do by all appearances. They've called up 30, 300,000 reservists, which is way more than you need to deal with that little bit of land down there. And what they're going to... Hamas has said if Israel sends ground forces in, they're in the war too. Uh, not Hamas, Hezbollah. And Hezbollah is like 10 times stronger than Hamas. So this will expand, and it will go beyond that. And, and even if they just, you know, if they do something really stupid and annihilate, you have a, a million casualties or something like that in Gaza, what will be the reaction from the world, especially the Muslim world, against Israel? Israel would have shown, will have shown everyone what they really are, and that is not God's people. They are not God's people. They have been cut off because God sent their Messiah and they refused to receive him. Not everybody, but the vast majority. So, but Israel has, has said the total siege. And there's, it's a, we're going to level all the buildings in the city. We're going to, there's no food, no water, no electricity, no fuel, no nothing. Sealed it off. And Egypt is cooperating with this. That's why their government's finished. Cooperating with the extermination of this area. And uh, it's clear Israel just wants to eliminate the problem. The way certain other countries try to eliminate the Jewish problem. By just ending it. But uh, this will just in, in, enrage everyone else. Again, if, and this is the issue as is a Temple Mount. It's not simply the Palestinians, it's the Temple Mount. And the, the radical uh, people that are controlling Netanyahu and the government in Israel today are determined to go down this road. And it will uh, bring about a, necessarily bring about a violent reaction from the entire Islamic world including revolutions in many countries where the leadership does not respond the way uh, the, the Muslim people believe they have to. Israel does not know the way of peace. Uh, they've, they've demonstrated their pariah nation. They've been rightly condemned as a apartheid and racist state in the past, I think by the United Nations, uh, which they are. They are. We have to look at things truthfully and look at their policies and look at their actions, not their words, look at what they do. 
And that's pretty evident from history and from the current maps and everything else. We know what they're doing because it's what they've been doing for years. It's not the policy of one uh, leader in Israel, but uh, many. It is the continual policy. Um, any that have, I think Rabin tried to deviate from that. What happened to Rabin? He was assassinated. Uh, yeah, Rabin was assassinated. People that have deviated from certain policies in the United States, like John Kennedy, were assassinated. Was it just a coincidence that they were? He was trying to uh, not follow the Pentagon's uh, war-hungry advice, and you know, after especially after the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis, decided to talk to the Soviets and uh, remove some of our nuclear missiles that were stationed in Turkey quietly, if the Russians would pull theirs out of Cuba. And he ended up, uh, shortly after that, being assassinated. Was it really Lee Harvey, Harvey Oswald's plan? or I don't know. Just a coincidence, I'm sure. But what's uh, going on in Israel is uh, could lead to a, a global conflict quite easily. I mean, you, you look in the world, and mo uh, you look at countries like Indonesia, which has a huge... Muslim population. And at very least, these places will be de de destabilized and there'll be masses of people crying out for the government to take action against Israel, military action. They'll be crying out for revenge, for vengeance for what Israel is doing. Israel provoked this thing. Israel has been pushing the Palestinians for uh, over a generation by mistreating them, by not being just, by stealing their land, by trying to push them out. A deliberate policy that's been going on for a very long, long time. And now everything is sort of coming to a head because the radicals have taken over. I mean, even before, under the secularists, they were not uh, committed to a radical vision of a pure Jewish state uh, that didn't even exist in the Old Testament. These people don't understand the law of Moses or the prophets. They can't because they have cut themselves off from the God who inspired those books. They are not... God's people. They're making a false claim uh, you, you, because they rejected the Messiah. And that's the way it is. It's a terrible state to be in, but they, God's provided atonement for them. They just have to repent of their unbelief and turn to him. They don't need a temple. God's already given the Messiah. He hasn't cut himself off from them. They've cut themselves off from his and his salvation that's give, given as a free gift. Eternal life is a free gift. Forgiveness of sin is a free gift because he provided the offering. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Through believing in him, in Christ, in the Messiah, in Hamashiach, Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, came and died on a cross for the sins of the entire world, not just for the Jewish people, but the entire world. That the gift of eternal life might be given freely to anyone who will believe in Christ. That is the answer. And he is coming back before this world destroys itself, which is trying desperately to do, apparently. Because this whole thing could go nuclear. We have to remember, the Muslims have nuclear bombs. Pakistan has a pile of them. Who knows? Who else has them? And I'm sure they're for sale on the market. 
But in any way you look at this, this will draw in all kinds of other countries if they go ahead with their plans. Hate never brings peace. Hatred at the end of the World War I brought World War II. The hatred at the end of World War II did not bring peace either. The first thing we have to do is repent of the hatred we have toward others. Otherwise, there will be no peace. And even then, there will be no peace until Christ returns. Because the problem is the human heart. People have to be reconciled to God. We need our hearts changed. And God has the power and has promised to do that in all who turn to him, all who turn to his Messiah, who brought in the new covenant, which is talked about in the Old Testament, in the prophets, about what God will do. He will bring about a new covenant where he will change people's hearts and their spirits, and he will put himself in them. Different situation altogether. And that's available today. Not just in the great beyond, but today, for whosoever will.